Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us on the Daily Dose of Dallas. My partner had to take a phone call. He'll be back shortly, and that's day. Okay. Uh, the reason why we have you here, we want to thank you for joining us for Black History Month and allowing us to give you your flowers. And another thing, I need to say this publicly, thank you so much for joining us on such short notice. Because no you, you could have been like, Negro, please. <laughs> I am not going to be somebody's oh, second no, guest. Nothing. So no, thank you for that. Um, <laughs> one of the reasons why we're doing this, my partner and I, we have a daily podcast on... Um, Facebook called The Daily Dose of Dallas and Day. And we talk about all topics all week long. So when we got to the month of February, I said, you know what? We need to feature black photographers every day mm -hmm. for the whole month of uh, February. And he said, okay. And I said, you know, me being a fashion photographer and a beauty photographer, I didn't want a month of fashion and beauty. That could be boring. So we started reaching out to um, other black creators and they're saying, we need to talk with photographers straight across the board. Doesn't matter what type of style they are. Didn't matter where they are in the hierarchy. And I was getting flooded with uh, people giving me suggestions. And as suggestions were coming, I got tons and tons of male photographers. And that was really nice. But I didn't want a sauces fest for the month of February. And I said, I need female photographers. And I started getting flooded with all these female photographers. There's a lot of documentary photographers. There was a lot of baby photographers, and then you popped up. And it was sports. And it was like, I've never seen a female sports photographer. I have to, have to, have to have her. So because of our schedules, the planets didn't align, and somebody got sick. And I'm glad he got sick, because now I have a free slot. Because nobody talks about female photographers in the industry of sports. How the hell did you get there? <laughs> I have been super invested in sports my whole life. Grew up playing sports. Um, my mom, when we were growing up, made us choose whether we're getting a job or you had to play. You had to play two sports. So I chose the sport. Yeah, we had to. You had to get a job. So some of my siblings decided to get a job. Me and my brother decided to go the sport route. And since then, I just always loved sports. Being in that atmosphere, it's it's an amazing atmosphere. The energy is incredible. And then I went to school because I wanted to be a sports reporter. So I went to Xavier University in Cincinnati. And I wanted to be a sports reporter at first. And then I realized I wasn't, I don't really like being in front of the camera. I didn't really like talking. To, I didn't really like that energy. And then my professor was like, well, how about you just like try shooting some things? So I got mostly started in video. Like I loved video. I loved Nike commercials. I wanted to be, I wanted to tell like those incredibly m emotional stories. So I was an extremely heavy into video for a really long time. So I got to intern with the Xavier men's basketball team. And that was really cool because they were like number five in the country at the time. So I got to go to all these like high energy games. And then one day I finally got a DSLR and I was like, oh, I guess I'll try taking pictures. And I just had like a natural talent for it. And then just since then, I've just been heavily invested. <laughs> so I have to say this. I decided to take my hand and try sports photography. <laughs> and I, and I kind of got it. Sports photography is m more so about catching the moments. So you have to anticipate the moments. Because a friend of mine said, if you don't see, they said, if you see the, the image in your viewfinder, then you already missed the shot. Yes. <laughs> and it's like, how did it come easy to you? Like, how did you know it was going to be like, I know I'm going to catch this yeah. touchdown or, or this punch yeah. in the face or whatever. How did you develop that? So just, I think it just comes from like how invested in sports I was. I knew how the plays worked. I knew how the atmosphere worked. I just knew, like, just growing up, watching my brother play football, he played basketball, just being at games. I played basketball, and I did track in college, and um, I just always was invested in sports, so I was like, oh, I guess I, it's almost like I could anticipate when something was going to happen, because you're like, oh, this guy is, all right, so I, I'm shooting this, I'm shooting the same team over and over, you start to learn their plays, so you're yeah. like, oh, okay, so when we throw it here, the big man usually slams it, if they get, you know, there might be a drop off here, so then you can almost anticipate what's happening before it actually happens right. some of it um i like to say some of it's kind of luck because sometimes i'll look through my pictures i'm like oh my god i got that like, <laughs> 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 oh, 
um, I'll just be like, oh, I don't know if I got it, or like, oh, I don't think that series was good, or whatever. And then I'll look, I'll like be scrolling through, like, oh my god, this is an incredible picture. It's wow. Just like, I just so happened to just, um, just know where to be because I was just like, okay, I like these angles, and I'm also a very um extravagant when I'm shooting so I'm the person that's like on the ground underneath the chairs like really <laughs> I'm like climbing on basketball hoops and like trying to get different angles so, so let me ask you a question do you 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 I've seen you done football do you run when they run or do you run when the basketball players are running across the field across the court football I have more opportunity to move so um I do so most sometimes when I have football games I'm, I'm doing video so like I I do I, I do be hustling, especially when we're doing like intro video shoots or something like that. I'm in full sprint <laughs> with really, um, yes, I'm in wow. full sprint running down the fields and I always tell my interns like we gotta we have to work out in this job because we're right. trying to keep up with people who <laughs> who are moving twice as fast and are incredibly fit. So we have to. So you're like, running with thousands of dollars worth of equipment. Yeah. <laughs> have you ever taken a tumble? No, and I always tell them if I fall, I'm leaving. <laughs> if I fall, I'm leaving. Now if you I know fall, I just put it in the universe. So yeah, if I fall, I'm I'm getting up immediately and I'm leaving. You will never see me again. I am leaving immediately. <laughs> because the fall will be spectacular. The fall. The worst part is when you get trucked by someone. That's that's, that's when they run into you. Yep, okay. they just steamroll you, and I I haven't been fully obliterated by anyone because I usually am. There was this one time a football player was running towards me full speed, and I unfortunately pushed a cheerleader out the way to save myself. <laughs> oh my god, this yes, is hilarious! I, yes, I pushed, I pushed, and then they showed the replay of the the play, and you just see me with my camera equipment like high <laughs> down. I get, I'm not getting embarrassed. Like I refuse. You're not going to be the one, so you'd rather crack the head of a cheerleader than you get your own head cracked. You're like, sorry, girl. Yeah, y'all, you'll be all right. You'll be all right. <laughs> It'll make you tough. It'll make you tough. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. I knew upon talking to you this morning, I said, oh, she's going to be fun. So I was really <laughs> excited about this. So what's your favorite sport to shoot? Ooh, that's a good question. Hmm. What is my favorite sport? I would probably have to say basketball. Why? I love I love the game of basketball. I'm just a huge basketball fan in general. And um, I just love the energy. There's always those wide shots. Of the, it looks like someone's soaring through the air. And it's just, um, it's just like amaz amazing visuals. It's high energy. When people are cheering, you see how the, the team camaraderie is really there. Like the bench gets into it. Everybody gets into it. And I just love, I love the atmosphere. Football, there's a football is good energy. It's 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 timing. I love football pictures. I haven't really solidified my hurdle shot yet. I that's like when a player is hurdling another player, like I really want a shot. Oh, like throwing up in the air and all that. Yeah, stuff. like I really want that shot, and I haven't unfortunately been um, been able to get that one. So you're um, kind of violent. <laughs> you like the violence of the sport, okay? Can track you also has a special place in my heart, just because I did track. Okay. And um, I think track is an extremely beautiful sport because it's it really so technical. Is. It's so technical in the way that people are able to like hurt, like high jump, or how they're able to like bend their bodies, make such beautiful pictures, and like shooting through hurdles. And you can get some really cool shots with that stuff. So. so, would you ever do ice skating? I I would love to. I just don't know if I would be able to get on the ice, like because I know sometimes they have to be on skates. And the last time I tried, I almost broke my tailbone. <laughs> so that's a nice way of saying I almost bust my ass. Yes. Okay. Got it, got it, got it, got it. And I, I just don't. And you'd have fallen on the ice, you'd have got up, and you'd have left. I would have left. <laughs> I would have, I would have, like a deer, like, you know, the deer, baby, I would have been, been trying and getting off. I would have been like, someone help me. Help me, Jesus. <laughs> what about boxing? Oh, love boxing. Love boxing. Just haven't been in the right space to be able to um, to shoot that. The World Games is actually happening in Birmingham, Alabama. Um, so they have a boxing segment. And I would love to cover that. And sumo wrestling is happening here. Okay. And I think that would be super. Wouldn't that be dope to shoot sumo look, wrestling? <laughs> look at you. Oh, my God. I, it's, it's been a while since I've seen everyone has their passion and love what they do. 
but yours is apparent, like you wear it on your sleeve. Like you're excited to see, um, you're, you're excited to see sumo wrestling. You're excited to, you can't wait to catch a football hurdle. You knock down cheerleaders. <laughs> you're, you're, you're quite aggressive in this game. How does it feel? That's, that's two part question. Are there other females out there when you're shooting? Rarely. It's and the rare. second part is, and you can finish that answer. And the second part is, how do the men treat you when you're out there? So let's throw that out there. Okay. Um, it's very rare when I see a female shooting, and it's very rare when you'll see a black woman shooting. Um, there, I, I met one one videographer. She, she used to work at UCLA. Her name's Steph Lavelle. She's like now my best friend because okay. we were like <laughs> we were only shout out to like, Steph. It was like you saw you know that Spider Man. You're like hold on. <laughs> like, when you're in those neighborhoods, we don't know anybody, yeah, but you see somebody, like, hey. Yeah, um, and people say, Do you know them? Mm -mm. But she's black, so hey, yeah. <laughs> that's my best friend, and we don't that's eat lunch it. together. <laughs> that's it. Um, how do the men treat me? I've I've had I'm also one of those um I want to say violent, but uh I'm just very strong willed. <laughs> I'm a strong willed person, so I, I demand a lot of respect as soon as you meet me i don't really tolerate no no bs any of that i speak my mind when i if i have something to say i'm gonna say it and if you feel bad about it you'll get over it um so in the in the field a lot of them um photographers we have a male photographer that helps shoot some of the uab sports games and that's my dog like i literally love him he's just like this really old man and he's super sweet um, and he always puts a good word in for me any, anytime there's like any opening or freelance opportunity. So, um, I think the photography life is there. It's very kind. Like a lot, so far what I've come involved with, it's very kind. You do run into some of the men who just don't want to talk to you and they just think they're better than you. Cause sometimes like people are shooting with the like, crazy cameras and I'm just like, wow, that's amazing. I want to like, can I talk to you about this camera? And they kind of just like brush you aside because they think they're big shots and, like they don't want to be bothered, and I'm like, that's cool. Like, do do you like? But do you knock them down? Do I? Knock them? <laughs> I give them. You know how you give them that little like, oh, okay. I'm, I got you. <laughs> yeah. You give them like, okay. Not right now, but I'm gonna get you. Yeah, like oh okay. I, I'll remember you next time. Yeah. So. So is this what you do for a living, or is this a side job? How does this work? It, out for um, you? it's a mixture. So I'm. I'm very, I'm one of those creatives that know how to do everything. Um, so I know how to draw. So I do a lot of graphic design work. Nice. So I do a lot of graphic design work. Um, I do a lot of video work. So my full-time occupation, I work at uh, University of Alabama, Birmingham, UAB, um, as their creative director. Nice. So I, so I do all the video board content, video, social media, engagement, um, graphic design, motion graphic work. So um, I do a lot of that and I do photos. And then on the side, so I do also freelance a lot. <laughs> so I do a lot of photography. I do mostly a lot of photography, graphic design work. So I'm, okay. I'm, I basically work all day. <laughs> so let's talk about this. Is your family, so when you, told your, when you told the family, I'm going into sports, and then you talked about I'm going into sports photography, what was the reaction to that? Oh, my family is the greatest of all time. I love my little family. Um, Good. They're very supportive of every single thing that I ever want to do. Um, they were just like, whatever makes you happy, we're happy. So they were just like, okay. So then when I started to like shoot the pictures and like I always um, show my mom, she'd be like, okay, girl, yeah, you did that. <laughs> and she was like, and like, I remember the first time I showed her like some of the things I was working on and she was blown away. She was like, oh my gosh, this is actually really good. Like, this is amazing. Like, you're actually really good at this. And so much so that now my little sister is going to school um, yeah. To be a visual communication, her goal is to be a photographer. So nice. she goes to Kent State um, right now in their visual communications degree. So she wants to be a sports photographer as well. So I have influenced my little sister to join this crazy creative life. <laughs> That's a bomb. So let's talk about um, the artistry of sports photography. When you're the portrait photographer, you're capturing the essence of a person. When you do beauty and fashion, you're either photographing the clothes or you're photographing the beautiful face. You have control of the lighting. You have mm -hmm. control of the makeup. You have control of all this stuff. Where's the art in sports photography? Sports photography is little details. It's the, um, it's just uh, one of my, 
one of our basketball players, he has a fearless tattoo on his arm. Mm -hmm. I think a picture, I actually have it on my Instagram feed. And it's like, I just like bent down a little bit and had the light like listening and you just see this fearless. So it's just like the little details because that makes, like if that tattoo wasn't there, that would that picture wouldn't have happened. Um, it's like, it's, it's taking pictures of people's shoes and <laughs> it's just bringing out the personality of that person and documenting that. So it's, it's taking different angles of a basketball sitting on the ground or a Gatorade cup. Or <laughs> and it's telling a story about what you're seeing and experiencing. Um, that's where the real art comes into it. Cause you're like, you can, of course there's like the press side where you're just showing the event. Like here's this layup and here's this and here's that. So then on the creative side, you have to add that spin in it is how do we show the same moments happening all the time, but in a different ways. So that's when you have to do these crazy angles, do these wide shots, tight shots, get sweat glistening. One of our players, I literally stood so close to him just to get the texture of the sweat on his skin. And he was like, what are you doing? I was like, Beak, just stand there. <laughs> he said, you better shut up before I hurdle your ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, be quiet. Like, I literally need you to just stand still. And then I went to edit it and just like boost the texture so much. And then I posted it. And people were like, oh, my friend was like, oh my God, the texture and that sweat is amazing. I was like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I would have blown every shot. So I commend you. And people needed to hear this because we don't get to talk to a lot of sports photographers. Somebody interviewed earlier this month, he does boxing. Now, let me tell you how he's funny he is. His name is Daryl Cobb. He does boxing and fashion. So he's straight across the board on both sides. And I think we're frozen at the moment. Oh, God, Instagram, don't mess me up. Are yes, you there? Sorry. Good. Okay. <laughs> uh, what happens is uh, his name is Daryl Cobb. He does boxing and fashion. And it, it's like watching him work. I get more enamored with his boxing photography because it's like he gets the punch and he got the punch and the yeah. jaws going out like this and the spits coming out. It's like, how did you know this going to happen? He says the camera never leaves the eye. Nope. You can never put a camera So <laughs> that's what he never puts it. He said that's when he's the only game with the phrase, if you see it and if you find it, then you missed it. Yeah. So, and just like he was talking about, you know, sometimes you hope you catch the shot and sometimes it's better than you think. Yeah. So tell us some of the biggest mistakes you've had when you've done sports photography? Getting invested in, because I'm a fan, I'm also a sports fan, sometimes I forget that I'm supposed to be looking at my viewfinder and I'm watching the game. So then I become a fan. So I'm, compl I'm, I'm now here and I'm now a fan cheering, but I'm supposed to be quiet on the sideline. I'm supposed to be biased because you're also shooting next to uh, like your opponent's team. And I'm full on like, let's go, like full on fist pump. And then the moment happens, and then everyone looks at me, and I'm like, I didn't get it because I'm <laughs> filming. I'm not even. I'm not doing anything. <laughs> like, and I'll get so upset with myself because sometimes big plays will happen, and I'll be like, Shit, I didn't get it. I'm over here watching the game. <laughs> You're gonna have to watch the replay. Yeah, I'm over here watching the game. They're like, Oh, that'd be cool if we had a picture of that. I'm like, Yeah, would have would have been great. <laughs> so, are you are you primarily doing college college sports? Yes. So you haven't done any professional teams yet? Not yet. Would you like to be to. there? Huh? I would love to. Okay. Oh, my favorite photographer, his name is Brandon. He shoots for the Panthers. Um, and he was the assistant photographer at the Jets. And then New York, he had this photo of um, one of the Jets players putting on his eye black. And he shot it through the mirror. So it was a reflection. Oh, it was incredible. And I was like, I want... And it's just because, like, the stadium lighting is beautiful in NFL teams, and the locker room lighting is gorgeous. Like, it's, like, perfect lighting. And, and like, the college, like, every college is different, so sometimes the lighting is not that great. So then I have to do all this. I hate using a whole bunch of ISO. So, like, you have to boost a whole bunch of ISO. So you have to go through what we have to go through. So yeah, and it's, like, really stressful when the lighting's not consistent because I'm like, oh, this picture would have been great if uh, the lighting was better or – Sometimes the lighting is like altered. So sometimes it's like, here's a white light, but then there's like a yellow light. So wherever you move on the court, it just looks bad. And then I have to do extra editing. Um, I just feel like, so professionally, they, it just looks like consistent lighting. Sometimes we play in like, um, we play in like, we play Miami and they play in the Hard Rock Stadium. And the mm -hmm. lighting in there was gorgeous. And I was like, yes. <laughs> so even before you go to work, you check the lighting out first. 
I, I usually have a, a sense of uh, I'll look at their Instagram pages and like their photography to see if, like like what what kind of lighting am I dealing with in this place? So lighting is important to sports photographers. Yeah, I would have never have thought that. I yeah. thought you get you fit in where you get in, and there it is. <laughs> yes, lighting is everything. <laughs> wow, I would. I'm glad we're having this conversation, so people, <clears throat> excuse me, so people know that this can be a viable vocation especially for women. If they like this, they need to know that it's okay. So that's why it was really important. Even if, even if I didn't interview you for Black History, you were going to be interviewed because people <laughs> needed to hear this from women, that there are women out there doing the damn thing in this arena. What advice could you give somebody, <clears throat> excuse me, male or female, that wants to get into this line of photography? Some advice. Um, I'm a big shoot your shot type of person. <laughs> so if this, if it's something that you want to do, reach out to high schools or reach out to athletic departments and see where you can help. Like, um, especially in sports creative, we need a lot of help. We're usually very understaffed. So we will always accept anyone and everyone who knows how, even if you don't know how to use the camera properly. Um, one of my interns, he is now a monster at video because I've been working with him so aggressively. And now he just, he blows me away with some of the things that he makes, but he wasn't that way at first. Like was very, very, not, didn't know the proper rules, lighting, didn't know much about ISO shutter speeds, didn't know anything like that, but just spent a lot of time learning and watching me work that now he, he's way better. So don't think like just because you don't have the greatest camera equipment or you don't have any camera equipment, just reach out and, I can teach you how to shoot on an iPhone. I mean, I shoot iPhone photography too. So <laughs> don't, 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 if you have a dream and you want to do this, like reach out and if your friends are athletes, I'm sure at least some of us have friends who are athletes, reach out to them and just see if you can go shoot a workout for them or like a tag along when they go work out. You know, people love, athletes love that type of stuff anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> they love that stuff. So like just reach out to them and test the wires a little bit and just play with angles, play with different edits, play with, you know, and create your own mood and your own theme. Like, that was a big thing for me where I always look at everybody else's edits and be like, why can't I edit like this? I'm like, why can't I do this? And then, the, and then I found my own style. I'm extremely dramatic in my, my editing, as you probably saw. <laughs> I'm an extremely dramatic editor and I'm an extremely dramatic shooter. And that's how my intern, uh, she described it to me. I have a photography intern. She's like, you're so dramatic in your pictures, but they're so amazing. And I was like, oh my God, that's a great way to describe that. Like, it's very dramatic. It's very contrasty, hard detail. Tells. I like I like to feel the emotion out of it, um, but that's my best advice: is just reach out. Don't be afraid. Don't be shy. And if they if they turn you down, just reach out to one of your friends and see if you can just like one of my good friends. She owns her own fitness business, and I help her um, do her creative work. Feel more underscore fit. Please check her out. I love her so much. <laughs> She's actually watching. Good, <laughs> good, good. Her. Um, and I just shoot her fitness thing so just even things like that it doesn't always have to be an athlete it could just be somebody just random working out and just if you can make a random person who doesn't know what they're doing look good when they work out you can probably make an athlete who is a god at what they do look incredible so so let's talk about your style how did it how did you develop it and how has it changed from when you started to where it is now hmm when I first started... You have a lot of fans coming up. I do? <laughs> I see a lot of fans, yeah. <laughs> um, when I first started, I was heavily influenced by Nike. Like, I really loved everything Nike does. This was just incredible to me. I used to listen to the speeches just before I would get ready for events just because they were so amazing. Like, I just love how they're able to capture the essence of what people go through in athletics. And how they show that visual is just so breathtaking to me. So I kind of already had a sense of what I wanted my work to kind of look and feel like. I knew I wanted to capture emotion and I want you to feel something when you see my photos. I want you, whatever the emotion is, like whether it's anger, annoyance, something, you're going to feel whatever you feel, that's fine. I want you to feel something when you look at my pictures. It doesn't always have to be good feelings. And so when I started developing it, it was... It, it took me some time. It took me a really long time because I was like, I, I don't like overly vibrant colors sometimes unless I'm shooting like a landscape. And then I so I would shoot and I'm like, I don't really like this. And then I'd shoot again like, oh, okay, okay, I'll already add some contrast. Okay, I kind of like this a little better. 
And then I found I figured out the DeHaze tool, and that changed. <laughs> 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 the DeHaze tool is always used in my stuff, and um, I've definitely come a long way because uh, I actually didn't know how to shoot that much. I actually um, posted a picture of what one of my first pictures I took in high school. And you can't even see the girl running. She is terrible. It's like, it's so bad. <laughs> the girl's running. You, it's so blurry. And it's just not a good look at all. Right. And then I saw, then I posted one of the pictures that I had just shot for softball. And I was like, wow, you've really, you've really developed, you've really developed that. Like just knowing, I took a lot of time learning camera settings because I didn't have the best equipment that could handle high ISO. Like I've, I did research on best times to shoot during the day if I'm shooting, you know, like noon. It's probably not the best because there's harsh shadows and like overcast days are really great to shoot and blah, blah, blah. So I like did a lot of research and just how I can make my pictures better if I can't afford the $6,000 camera equipment. And that's where it kind of started to turn for me. And I started to develop my style. I was like, okay, well, all right. I like how I shoot during the day at this time. But I don't like how I shoot during this time. I like overcast days, but sometimes I want a harsher shadow on my pictures so we can shoot at noon. And um, so now in my 26 years, I I still don't think I like it, but I'm working on it. <laughs> uh, Kritas were never satisfied, and I'm sure you know. Like You probably look at something, no. and the more you look at it, the more you hate it. <laughs> you're like, what, what am I doing? Like, why? I suck. <laughs> you're like, this is terrible. I thought it was good at the moment, but this is now terrible. And That's everybody like else will love it. Us. You're like, this is air. Okay, you guys just have low standards. <laughs> That's how it is. It's funny because out of all the photographers I've interviewed so far, you have discussed lighting the most. Really? Yeah, that, that's really crazy. Not the fashion people, not the portrait people. The sports person is talking more about light than we are. So let me ask you a question. <clears throat> because I'll be in some of these, they could be chat rooms, they could be photo rooms. When you shoot, what camera setting are you on? Is it manual? Mm-hmm. You, so you shoot in manual? Yep. Okay, because I know people who like to shoot at aperture priority or yeah, yeah. shutter priority. So you're manual. I like you're complete, hardcore. I like complete control over everything. I have a control issue. <laughs> I like to control. Because um, if I want to change how it looks like, I spend so much time in my camera settings that I know that my, like, what I tell my photography interns is like, if it looks good without an edit on it, you took a good picture. <laughs> like that, that's a great picture. Like if you didn't, if you just posted that raw, it would be a beautiful photo. Um, so that's how much, that's how much lighting is important to me. Cause I'm like, if I don't have to do a lot in the edit sequence of my time, I'm a lot happier <laughs> cause it takes me, cause I don't, as I said, I'm not happy with my editing style. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, this looks great. So you're not happy with your editing style, but you will contrast the shit out of a photo. Oh, contrast the shit. <laughs> contrast the hell out of it. And if I oh shoot a landscape, God. when I shoot a landscape, vibrance is my thing. Like, it just depends on what I'm shooting. It just really depends. Um, I, I'm, I'm leaning more towards, like, a darker feel with my, um, like, a more, I like a minimalistic look to things. Um, so a lot of my basketball pictures, I edited like that, and I was in love with them. And I was like, okay, yeah, this is it. But then sometimes the lighting will change, and it doesn't hit the same, and now I'm frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> so if you wasn't shooting sports work, what would Mercedes be doing? <clears throat> if I wasn't shooting sports, I'd probably be a full-time graphic designer. I love graphics. I love that that concept. And if I wasn't shooting sports... Lord, I don't know what I'd be doing. Really? Be sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> I would try to be a hardcore. I love video games. <laughs> so you're a gamer too. I would try to be a professional video gamer because I love my video You games. are a straight man's dream. You like <laughs> sports. You like going to sports. You like violence. You <laughs> like gaming. You like sleeping. Can you cook? I can burn. <laughs> so you're all, oh, oh no, you're. You're gonna get lots and lots and lots of proposals. I guarantee you this. But let's let's talk about this. What other things do you like to shoot? I love babies. <laughs> I love. <laughs> I love babies. Uh, children are the world to me. I just just a little chill. Oh, there's a family that always 
request me for their family photo shoots, the Cliffords. And every time I shoot them, I end up tearing up because they have such a, be you can just feel the love that they have for each other. Oh, I just think that's so beautiful. I just love love. <laughs> I think I just love little babies so much. <laughs> you're an anomaly. You you juxtapose babies and sports. It's just like my just like the other guys, fashion and boxing. It's like I shoot beauty, fashion. So they're like <laughs> they, they, they're <laughs> mad. You don't see me shooting uh, fashion and car crashes. Just, yeah, like, it, it doesn't jive. Now, some of my photo shoots are like car wrecks, but that's another story. But let's go back to you. Um, is there anybody else in the family who who's into the arts that I influenced you? I have a pretty creative family, actually. My mom's an interior designer. Okay. Uh, my brother went to school for graphic design. I'm who I am. And then my little sister. My oldest sister is probably the only one that doesn't do a creative thing. <laughs> so it's in the DNA. It's in the DNA. And my dad can draw a little bit. Like, my dad is more of an entrepreneur type of guy. But if he needs to draw something, like, he actually was the first person to show me how to draw a dog. So, like, okay. Yeah, so he knows how to, like, he knows how to draw, like, like little doodles. He's, like, more of an abstract kind of guy. And uh, my mom can draw, really. My brother is an amazing artist. Uh, so it's basically in the DNA, really. Um, my mom so, is extremely, she loves decorating houses <laughs> a lot. There you have it. <laughs> like, her, have like her living room has one navy blue wall and the other wall is out. Like, That's right. kind of dope, though. I can't do that, but I, I appreciate it. Because yeah, I want my house, it, all laid it to out me to look light, corny. Yeah, a little light gray. And it's very classy. And she's like, don't lay on my couch. I'm like, you're right. I'll sit on <laughs> Lay on the floor. Yeah. Like, got it, got it, got it. So um, let's see. We we covered a lot of little things here, which are amazing. So, what is Nike in your future for commercial work? Will you ever think about doing commercial sports work, like for ESPN or Nike or any of that stuff? Is that in your dream future? I would future? love to if I had the opportunity. If it, if God if God has it for me, then I'm always happy. I'm a I love me some Jesus and whatever he wherever he puts me. That's where he wants me. I love Nike. I would love to film, do anything <laughs> for Nike. Well, you have to manifest it. They yep. have to see who, they have to see you are because, <clears throat> because with the murder of George Floyd, uh, they op unfortunately, this has become a time where everybody's opening their doors. Mm -hmm. Just manifest it. Mm -hmm. Because the worst they can do is say no. Right. And from the work I'm seeing and your human interest style and all that stuff, they need that. They need the black woman's voice out there because these white men have been doing it for hundreds of years. They need a different voice. So manifest it. I will. I'm putting that there to you. Man, they need to see this. Thank they you. really need to see this work. So I'm just putting it out there. So do you do portraits of the, of the sports? Of the sports. Do you do portraits of the athletes as well? Sometimes. Um, men's basketball, we did a huge photo shoot for them. So I basically was, uh, I directed that photo shoot and I, I'm going to boast about myself. I slayed Do it. it. I Do slayed, it. You, you slayed um, it. I slayed, like I had a whole pose list. I had them ready. I had them looking fine and we did like a street style and then we put their uniforms on and my guys was feeling good. Oh, it was such a great time. We had a lot of fun. Um, it was amazing. That was like the first time I actually got to do it. And it was, it went so well. It was super smooth. Like there was no issues, which is finally, um, <laughs> which is a first, you know, usually anything that can go wrong will go wrong. And right. <laughs> and it was so smooth and I, I just loved it. Yeah. So. So what was your aha moment in, when you said to yourself, not only do I have the camera, but this is what I want to do. My aha moment. I think it was when I was for a long time at Xavier I was just doing a lot of like the swimming sports the track like more of the Olympic sports but it, I knew it was real when um, Coach Mack he's at Louisville now the men's basketball coach uh, he he mentioned something to me like I, I, I see what you're doing and and it's really good and then they were like we're gonna put you on the men's basketball we're going to put you on men's basketball. And I was like, oh, my God, yes, I love basketball. 
<laughs> and and then I got to my mentor who is everything to me. His name is Cliff. He really took me under his wing when I was at Xavier. And the way that he shot things was absolutely beautiful. So he just let me do a lot of his like commercial setups and all that. So I got a lot of behind the scenes and just that a lot of the how to set up things and how to set up sets was huge for me because if you don't have that knowledge, it's very scary when you go into your first set and you don't know how lighting works and how angles work and how to work fog machines and all that stuff and wind blowers and stuff. It's very, it's a lot. Um, and so when I got the moment, they were like, you're going to, you're going to shoot the Villanova versus Xavier game. And they were number one, in, they were number one in the nation. We were number five. We packed the stadium out and I was shooting this game and I was like, this is it. This is like almost caught on fire because I was too close to the pyro trying to get a cool shot through the fire of one of the players. And they're like, you have to step back. And I was like, but it's worth it because it's going to look amazing. <laughs> so the burn would have been worth it. The burn, the burn would have literally, literally, metaphorically, the burn was the set fire of my life. That's when I knew like, this is it, right? <laughs> this is it. I want like, it was just like the adrenaline, the drill, and the energy was incredible. And oh my gosh, it was the baseline is packed with sideline and like we're all shooting. We had sign seats where we could sit and was, you're trying to fight for shots. Oh, it was incredible. It was just everything. <laughs> so everything has been there. So and I got me... addicted. Like I got addicted to that adrenaline. You get addicted, and, you know, adrenaline's addictive. So I got addicted to that. And I was just like, this is amazing. Like just being in that atmosphere and being able to, you're shooting like, and that, at that point, like, it's almost given to you. Like, anything you basically point your camera at because it was so high energy just was, like, I got people screaming in my camera. You got people painted over blue faces. And then you just – at that point, you just pick the angle that you want and you're going to get – Because it's there. already there for and you. it was just – yeah, it's, like, it's already created. And it was fantastic. <laughs> Do you ever try to bring other women into sports photography? Yes. It's – honestly kind of hard to find i get a lot of emails from from males but it's very hard to find women who are like hey, i i want to be in this space um like i have a few women who are in it but some one of my photographer interns she also wants to be a singer so she kind of does that too and okay. um but she she does mostly like she got in, into it by doing like senior portrait like senior portraits for like high school students mm -hmm. and it was like i want to do sports photography and then i've developed her and and that way um i would love to get more women applicants and just know that I, I love women. It. You see this? He's asking yeah, for you. Please, so why do you think emails? <laughs> why do you think that's the case, though? I think sports just has a really bad history about being pieces of shit. Like usually, um, I think a lot of the sports industry has hurt a lot of women, and they just drag women. Like you see what they do to Serena Williams. You see, you see how women are treated just from an athlete athlete perspective like how are they are they going to treat me any better when i'm a woman like are they they don't even accept their women athletes are they going to accept a, a woman employee and just some of the horror stories that you hear i can see how it turns people off extremely especially when you're like i'm going into a male dominated industry and there's not really a woman in sight like who can i relate to you know like and um i think that's what it is i think a lot of it is just you might get, you might feel like you're going to get treated at practice or they're going to be like, oh, she's a distraction, which is the biggest annoyance of if she's there, she's going to be a distraction because what if she wears leggings one day and then, and the boys might look at it. It's very aggressive and, um, and it don't, don't happen to be pretty, you know, because they're going to be like, oh, she's a distraction. Their little boys are trying to talk to her, but it's never like, why don't you get this little boy together then? Like, he gonna come over here and get disrespected. Trust. <laughs> like, our head on, our head on like, ain't nobody checking for no little boy. So please. So, like, like. so let me ask you, have you had that happen to you? Yes. I'm listening. Yes. <laughs> yes, I have. Unfortunately, I'm like, uh. I'm thick with four C's, so I have a very I'm a <laughs> I'm a thick I have a very thick lower body. Don't really have a booty, but I have a really big leg. So men see me and they're like, "Oh, she got that back because in my front I have really thick thighs." And it's not true because when they I'm like, "Ah, oh, surprise! It's not there." <laughs> but um, it's definitely a like, oh, like just because I have such big thighs, anything I wear is gonna hug me tightly, like. No matter, I'm going to fill it out because I'm, right. I'm just naturally built like that. And sometimes it's the comment of, oh, you, you need to put on longer shorts. And 
Um, and it's like, I, I, they actually are long. Um, my thighs were just eating them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> um, like, uh, so it's just like, that's what's kind of unfair about the sports industry is how women are just like nitpicked for every single thing. And then, like, nobody says anything to the male athletes walking around shirtless and doing all that. Like, because nobody, that's a part of it. Like, nobody even thinks twice about it. But don't let, don't let someone wear some leggings, then it's a problem. Or a little tank top. And then it's, like, it's more about, like, the outfits. Because, oh, we don't want her to be a distraction. I'm doing my job the same as you, sir. Like, I'm not worried about a man that does not have any financial resources for me. Can't probably read. I'm okay. Okay? Like, I'm okay. You <laughs> know? Like, I'm good. Like, I have a standard, please, and believe that. Like, like I'm good. <laughs> like, it's okay. Like, I'm okay. No one's checking for it. I need a man. Like, I'm, I'm grown. I need more than <laughs> just whatever this little boy is providing. I don't need that. <laughs> I'm, I'm, excuse me, I'm writing down quotes. So, <laughs> yeah, you're giving me some great quotes here. The women that are coming up on this, on the feed right now, I guarantee you, you're going to be the best one they're going to love so much because of the energy. I'm Mercedes, you have no idea how fucking honored I am oh for God. you to have taken time at the last minute to come in and do this. So thank you, because this is what we needed to hear, both men and women, um, because you're not to be messed with. I'm not. And it's not about your looks. It's not about your body. It's about your talent. And a lot of women have to go through bullshit because of guys. And I'm apologizing for the assholes that are out there mm -hmm. because we're not all that way. Mm -hmm. So I'm just putting that out there. Yeah. So let's get back to you. So you got the big booty thighs and y'all can spring your shit off. <laughs> oh, I'm going to get so much for this. Um, what other photography do you like? Because you talked about landscapes. Oh, I love, I just and love babies. It. And babies. I think um, there's a photographer who I met at UAB. His name is Camp. And he shoots some of the best landscape. For, I just, I feel like I'm there. And I, that's what I love about landscapes photography. They put you like literally in whatever event that they're covering. And it's incredible. Um, one time I was covering a jazz festival randomly in Pittsburgh. And I met a guy named Clyde. And he showed me his jazz festival from the Caribbean. And I one love Caribbean men. And <laughs> And it was so beautiful. And I was like, I, well, I just want to shoot everything. I don't really, I love sports. That's like my knack. But I think just anyone who just shows me their passion, I'm just instantly invested. Like when it, there's a musician who's very invested, you can feel that emotion. I'm a big, I'm a big high energy emotional person. So I just love when people like even share their craft with me. I just think it's gorgeous because you can see that and it shows in your pictures. So when you show me landscape or like concert photos that are just, like, they got the sweat glistening, they're in the mic. Like, it's, it's crazy. And, like, landscapes, I just feel like when people are able to put you there and you're nowhere near being at that place, I think that is absolutely incredible. I, like, love landscapes. Like, I want to go to Bora Bora just off of some of the – I want to – like, some of the things, I'm like, I wouldn't probably be comfortable doing that. I'm like, I don't, I don't really like – I'm out of fear of drowning, okay? I don't really like big bodies of water. Your thighs won't let you sink. <laughs> no, like, flotation devices. And then there's just like this really cute photo of this, this man in this boat like rowing. And I was like, I would love, that's really pretty. I don't know if it's going to be for me though. I like my camera in a body of water on a boat. I don't know. If I <laughs> drop that, who's going to save it? I'm going to just. <laughs> are, you, are, you, are you just going to leave? I will row to the shore and switch it. Oh, I will run on water. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mercedes, this is my partner day. Hi. You miss. I was about to say you are missing out on one of the dopest. I'm sorry. Interviews. I had uh, emergency. family emergency. So this is my partner, and Hi. trust and believe. When homeboy canceled on me today because he got sick at the last minute, it was like I was so excited to get you. <laughs> so it went. It's going. This is a dream. Of course, a dream. Dream. This was supposed so to. I gotta watch this back. He has to. Have, you have to watch oh, it back. Boy. You do have to watch it back. Um. So she was talking about she she does sports. That's no, what she does. No, I heard some of that. I want. I want. I'm sorry for jumping. I just want to say. No, you're good. She's amazing. I was surprised you didn't like just randomly say, "Well, who the hell is this?" I know, right <laughs> exactly. No, this is. Uh, I I I can't even. I'm sorry. 
I'm, I'm fangirling you right now. So oh, my gosh. Thank you. Let me no, get no, into no, the I'm gonna, mix together. I'm, I'm cry. <laughs> so let me ask you this question. Were you surprised when I reached out to you? Yes, because, oh, this is such a, this is, this is going to sound really weird, but I always uh, tell one of my, my little friend group here, uh, I'm like, how am I not a famous photographer? I'm so good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I talk a lot of mess, okay? I talk a lot of mess. And my girl would be like, you go here, Miss Fillmore is who I'm referring to in the comments. And she was like, you gonna be famous, girl. And then like the next day you reached out to me, I said, look at God. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we talk about manifestation. So I see you, and I'm putting it out there. So I see you with ESPN. I see you with Nike. It's gonna happen. They need your voice, so I'm just putting I'm just putting that out there. Thank you. I so agree. I'm just I'm just saying I'm just saying. So, what has been one of your most get proper English? What has been your most prolific moment of photos that you've ever taken? Like, oh my God, this is my defining shot. Um, oh, there's a simple your favorite photo. Oh, my favorite photo. I have a few. One of my favorite photos I took of, um, it was a softball player, and I had her, like, throw some chalk on her mitt, and I just timed the photo out well. I actually won, uh, I got honorable mention. I entered the photo competition just because I just thought I should try. And um, what was the name of that photo competition? I don't even remember. That's terrible. Oh, it's the, <laughs> um, it was the National Dentist. I would have to look. I don't want to mess up and butcher it, and then they get upset. Um, but I got honorable mention for this photo, and I was like, oh, my God, like, that's, it was an international competition, too. So, like, just even the fact that I was even, because some Considered, of the people were like, right. hey, they never got pictures of camelbacks. I'm, I don't live in Egypt, so I can't get no pyramid. You know, I get oh God, <laughs> access to that. And um, the fact that my little sports photo got honorable mention, and they were like, this is an amazing photo. And um, one of my other favorite photos, uh, it was just, like, it's, like, the essence of a female athlete, a black female athlete um, that I did for my friend who owns that fitness business. It's actually on my page. It's just like she had her natural hair and it was just like up and just beautiful. And it was an overcast day and she was sweating and working super hard. And it was just it's such a beautiful essence of what a female black athlete looks like. And that is one of my favorite photos because she's so beautiful. And it's just such an essence of just just she was just like in her true blackness and just was unashamed of it. And I just really appreciate the moment to even be able to capture that photo. Um, so that was probably my two. What sports have you not shot yet that you would love to shoot? Sumo wrestling. If anybody knows anybody, please call me. <laughs> Why sumo wrestling? What is it about sumo wrestling? I just feel like, oh my gosh. I, just like the little thing that they do. Like, I just love like this. <laughs> do, do that movement again. <laughs> Oh gosh, um, is I would love to do. I I like, I want to shoot anything. That's how I always been. Like oh swimming, I want to shoot that. Like anytime I'm there at school, like can someone cover this volleyball? Man, I was like I'll go. And they're like oh can someone do track? I'll go. They're like can someone go shoot golf? I'm there. I'm like <laughs> I love shooting like anything. Like I I just think like the hardest thing I've ever shot was lacrosse because like, I don't know where the ball is. And <laughs> I was like, I don't know where this ball is. Y'all got to tell me. As long as not, as long as not like, flying at your lens, you're yeah, good to go. like I've shot bowling, like I've shot all types of sports. So like sumo wrestling, like some of those, uh, I would love to shoot diving. I think that would be really pretty. Diving would probably be something I would love. Yeah, because they do all that little, you know, and it's spinning. Yeah. <laughs> you that moving again? Um, what they, what they do? <laughs> um, I would love to shoot. I would love to shoot. I buy. So anybody who's coming to the World Games and knows the sumo wrestling people, please call me. I would love to be a part of this. <laughs> Maybe we need to find some information. Please, because yeah. I would love sumo wrestling. Just because it's like and it's like a dark. Um, it's like almost a vignette around the the. I don't so know, you the already circle. got your light. I already got the vision, like in like a wide shot, and they're both in the like in the sides getting ready, and they're in a stand. That's a fabulous photo right there. <laughs> Look like Street Fighter. <laughs> oh, she likes gaming too. Oh, nice. So let me tell you a little about it. She likes gaming. Nice. She likes sports. Nice. She cooks, and she likes to sleep. Oh, great! All the things. Oh, you. <laughs> what are you, a Taurus? <laughs> I'm a Cancer. Oh, okay. 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 We, can, like we can take that. Yeah. Oh, I'm. Yeah, I'm emotional, and I have mood twins. That's what I'm gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Pretty bad. Just, you don't know who you're gonna wake up and get. <laughs> 
we come across so many cancers that lie. I'm not that way. As they're crying. As they're crying. I'm not that <laughs> no, I am. I actually had a bit yesterday, and I'm a completely different person from yesterday. <laughs> Yeah, I so so let me ask you a question. Now we got to the mood swing part. Are there any ever are there ever any times that you didn't feel like going to work, but you went anyway? My favorite statement is, "I'm ready to go home." <laughs> are you sure you're not a tourist? Yeah, you sure? I am a homebody. Anytime I have to leave my house, I am upset. My friends know if there's not food there, I'm not. I'm just. I'm not going. You're not a you're not, not a cancer. You're a tourist. You're a tourist. You're a tourist. I don't like new like people. I don't like new people. So if you try to introduce me to somebody, I'm not gonna speak. Cause I don't know who that I'm is. Not I don't like know that. that person. No, I'm not like that. I don't have that. I don't that I don't have. Listen, I don't, I'm <laughs> not I'm not going to friends' parties. Like they'll say, Oh, we having a party and I'm like, Is it gonna be food there? They'll be like, Well, do you have drinks? And I'm like, I'm not going. <laughs> 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 yeah, my friends know, like, oh, Mercedes, Mercedes, we got you some food. You're going to be good. You can be in a little I'm corner. There. I'm, I'm there. There's some music. Uh -huh. I go to sleep on the couch. No problem. <laughs> Larry's house is the greatest. <laughs> now, you, that's what I live with every day. Yeah, so it's usually I have to make a decision, like, what are we going to do? Are we going to eat? Or are we going to, like, not? Yeah. Oh, and if we're talking too long, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start eating. Like, there's oh. no... What are we waiting for? I yeah. my friends will know. Like, if somebody's late to our little brunch outing, just go ahead and order Mercedes. And can you bring out her plate first? Because we don't want to deal. I'm gonna get upset. <laughs> I am. I, I'll be. I'll be cranky. Like, oh boy. That's why I like groups. Because I, I hate waiting for people. You know what bothers me when you're trying to you about to order your food and this person don't know what the fuck they want. That bothers me. <laughs> I have four options already ready, so I don't understand how you don't have one. Absolutely. As exactly. I look, I'm going to do one, two, three, and I'm going like this as the, as the way it is asking you. You're a little stupid ass. Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's always the person, y'all can go. Who's like, I can't let me tell you. Let go. me tell you how bad he is. <laughs> we'll be in the car. He says, bring up the menu and pick up what you yeah, want. Yeah, because the menu was The menu has been brought up the day you told me we were going. Yeah. Yes. Okay. There you go. Because nobody yeah. got time to be sitting there. Didn't I tell you she's going to be dope? <laughs> yeah. Didn't I tell you? Listen, that little time of sitting there is wasting time. It's I like know what appetizer, boy. entree, dessert I want. We don't need to. I know what drink I want. I, want, I know everything. <laughs> Absolutely. So figure it out. Before we even figure do this, out. look. You knew what was going to when we was in the car. You should you be on your plan. phone. You made you the plan. You on Instagram. Get on Instagram and go to the menu. <laughs> okay, let me take it another step. So he has me in the car looking at the menu. Yeah. No, no. Watch this. They put the menu in front of me. He's like, oh, no. No, you're not. You're not looking at the menu no. again. So we get to the restaurant to sit down and they hand me the what? menu. You know what you want And I pick you? up the menu. Let me see what they have. Oh, he's like, oh no, 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 no. You had that chance in the car. Listen, they put do the these, menu down. They do these things. They'll come to your table like, "Hey, I'm gonna get some water." And they go away for like thirty for forty minutes. Forty minutes. They come back. Like, I can't live off of water, ma'am. I'm not here to drink no. water. <laughs> and, you, and look, it's different. When I'm hungry, I'm hungry. It's like, come on, I don't have no time to wait. I'm not gonna keep flagging you down, sir, sir, yeah. sir. Yeah, because I'm gonna start getting rude. Oh, uh, excuse me. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Mental note: Do not. I repeat: Do not. Do lunch or dinner <laughs> with Day and Mercedes. I am not going. I understand you. I am easy. I'm usually, listen. Look at this. In fact, kids unite. I'm <laughs> not messing with you guys. Listen, all I'm saying is I know what I want. I'm very, very, like, hurry up. You should know what you want to. Don't waste time. Yeah. And, yeah. If you, and if you know I'm hungry, like, if I say I haven't eaten since I, before I got here, that Feed means me. you have point zero 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 one seconds to get it together. Absolutely. <laughs> That's your So this shot. is what you look like if you was a woman. Yes. Got <laughs> it. I can't even, I Got it. Know. He goes this thing. He'd be like, what do you want to eat? He's like, I don't give a fuck. I can eat anything around here. I can go to this anywhere. I don't care. I'm going to eat some Cheetos and be happy. Don't play this. Absolutely. I need something. Just come on. I got no time to be going back and forth. OK, back to the interview. <laughs> Sorry. OK. Thank you. Wait, that. Not like, now he's part of the show. Again. So let me talk about this. I'm at the point of the interview where I ask, what are three adjectives that will describe Mercedes? Oh, gosh, I love and this why. question. And why? OK. Um, I think, is, is robust a good one? Robust, robust. is a good one. Robust. Um, I why robust? 
I have a very robust personality, as I'm proud you already picked up. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> I'm a high energy person. Um, and I just like to laugh and have a good time. And uh, it, it's even when I'm angry, it's robust. So <laughs> like, um, another average actor that I'm extremely, what's a good word? I'm very, I'm empathetic. I'm extremely okay. empathetic. I'm in a very, so I understand when people are going through tough times, like I feel those feelings. And that's probably why I care so much about my emotional aspects of my pictures. Cause I feel everything and I want people to feel what I, what I'm shooting. And I just don't like when people are sad or down or, um, so I just, another one. I'm my friend, Ms. My, Fillmore. Let me tell you, Miss Fillmore is literally my god. I'm, fi I'm feeling Miss Fillmore. Miss Fillmore and Miss Ash. Uh, those are my girls. Love them to death. Love you guys so much. <laughs> they so you gave us, it. you gave us robust and empathetic. What's your third one? Oh gosh. How would you describe me? Hmm. I'm hardworking. Okay. Passionate. Like I'm extremely passionate. I'm a very passionate person. I love the things that I love. I love them deeply. Like, like, like my friends love that. I don't have a lot of friends, but the ones that I do, like, I, you know, everybody, everybody is your friend, you know, like even if you say that you're friend, but the ones I true, you know, I'm your friend when I share food with you. That's a huge indicator. Yes. I don't yes. share food, but if I share it with you, <laughs> Yes, you, it means you, something. You mean something to me, and I take those friendships and those relationships and then my. Craft. You see that mark right there? <laughs> no. I took a French fry. No, was it? I took a French fry oh, off his plate. Oh my gosh! I took a French fry I off his plate. Screamed at my dad for asking me for a, one of my French fries in the middle of a restaurant. He and I slammed my hand down, and he was he's like, "I'm buying them. I don't care. Order your own." <laughs> <laughs> but that didn't happen because of me. But I agree with you. I, oh my god! I had this thing. Oh my god! My my best friend, when he was going to the store, asked me if he wanted anything. And he said no. So when I ordered it, he was like, "Can I have some?" And I was like, "What the fuck is wrong with you? What the fuck? <laughs> do you want anything that you don't yes. understand?" Like my friend, no. no. Hey, we're back on the food network. I'm sorry. The, that's so funny. The first time I ever went out to eat with my friends, I told them straight up. If I order an appetizer, it's for myself and it's not for you, and I do not share. I just want that to be. But separate. appetizers are just for sharing. You know no, they're not. Somebody little stupid. They're for my. The, it's, it's called appetite. appetite. This, <laughs> this bothers me every time I see that coming across. I'm like, what are you doing? That's I will stab you. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? Why did you even think that was a good idea? Yeah, there was, like, come on. So there was somebody was who I didn't know. She was like, can I have a slice of your pizza? I looked at her so dis... I don't even know you, first of all. <laughs> like, like we're just in the group together. Like, can you fucking not? <laughs> I was, can you have a slice of my pizza? Why did you get your own? Girl, I don't even know where your hand... I don't even... I'm not comfortable with you. <laughs> I, 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 absolutely not. <laughs> my face hurts. Oh, my God. Literally, we were like, oh, absolutely not. So we're coming to the end of our interview. Oh, I'm so pissed. Oh, man. This was oh, we can do another one. Hour. We can do another one. We're definitely going to do another one. Fuck another this. One. But let me ask you this question. For all the gearheads out there, what's in your photo bag? Wait. Oh, God. Don't start. No. Please don't start. Where is she? She's probably got a call. I hope not. No. no. We lost her. We lost did we lose the whole thing? No, we didn't. We gotta get it back. Right there. Boom. 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 Come oh. back. Sorry, somebody was calling me. God. <laughs> I hope we still have sound because the last time we had this, we lost sound. No, we did. I can hear you. Okay, we'll see in a second. They'll say we have no sound. So, what's in your camera bag? That's oh, our last question. Too bad, too bad. What is in my camera bag? Um, I keep trail mix. <laughs> nice. We trail meant. We, we meant. No, we didn't. Keep going. We meant gear wise. No, we don't. Carry on. Mountain trail mix. I keep a. 24 to 70 millimeter with a f-stop of 2.0 nice. i keep a 70 to 200 with an f-stop of 2.80 i keep a 35 35 millimeter is actually my favorite lens <laughs> um i keep my little 
SD card adapter, because you know, MacBooks changes, you can't plug in USB ports, which is amazing, great, oh, everybody loved that. Um, a phone charger, some water. And I actually shoot with a Canon 7D Mark II. Okay. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> nice. So now we're at the last point where we have to get a good photograph. You need a good photograph. So okay. what we're going to do is we're going to pose and hold it. Yeah. Be perfect. <laughs> we're going to hold it for three seconds. Okay. Ready? Okay. <clears throat> so one, two, three, and hold it. And we're done. <laughs> Mercedes, oh my God, I, I have a new friend. Uh-huh. Yeah, we can, do, we can do oh Instagram God. Live once a day. I love talking to you. This is great. So thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for allowing us to give you your flowers. Thank you. And um, where's she at? Where's she located? She's right there. No, no. Like, oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Where are you located? I live in Birmingham, Alabama. God damn, we're so far. We can't go eat. <laughs> I'm actually going to be in Dallas uh, next month. For Good, because Minnesota. we're going to be in L.A. We in okay. L.A. Awesome. <laughs> But no, once this pandemic shit is over, yeah, we gonna it's on and popping. And I will yes. be taking your French try off your plate no, like you this. Don't oh, I don't. I, I need I, a matching flip scar. The table. Right, we ain't nobody eating. Scar right here. That's so. Nobody's eating. Table's getting flipped. We're not. Nobody's eating. If I can't eat, <laughs> nobody's eating. <laughs> but Mercedes, thank you so much for an amazing interview. Thank you. We love you. He Here's your you. flowers. Um, don't be a stranger. Yes. I won't. I follow you. I had to follow you because he he just so, yeah. so we do love you. So have a good, good day. You as well.